Bitcoin is beginning to show even more weakness on the smaller time frame. Will Bitcoin be able to break through the current downtrending resistance and push back upwards, or are we destined to see a further continuation downwards? With the monthly candle close just around the corner, the pressure is definitely on. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic weekend. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the next move for Bitcoin, focusing on the smaller time frame charts, discussing those from a technical and structural perspective, going over various invalidation and validation points, targets and key trigger points to be watching out for for both the bearish and bullish arguments. We're also going to be going over the weekly and high time frame charts discussing the most relevant and important levels to watch. Before we get into it, smash the like button, hit the comment button and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts, data, technical and structural information, relevant economic news and news events. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you were interested in, join us on Telegram. We have our Telegram channel. It is a second link down below. You'll get access to charts, updates, videos, educational posts, news events, and everything you need to stay in the loop with cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and the relevant economic data. If you are interested in joining our VIP channel, we have our VIP channel here. We post exact trades with exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses. There's an example from a couple days ago. You can see our entire trading track record for the month. We had 30 trades and we had 82.75% win rate. We do currently have a sale at the moment for our VIP memberships. If you're interested in joining, go ahead and contact me. You can find all membership information here and our entire trading track record over here. You're going to get access to two groups, the main VIP group and our group chats with all of our members trading, learning and developing their skills on a daily basis. Let's dive into the video. So starting off with the market data, volume is miserably low, absolutely miserably low. I haven't seen volume so low in cryptocurrency this, as we've seen this weekend for a very long time. Looking at the volume, we're sitting at 28 billion down 34%. Overall liquidations sitting at 31% in the negative, sitting at 18 million. So it is the weekend, volume is generally quite low. But if we look at the overall volume in cryptocurrency, it has been dropping pretty steadily now for the last couple of weeks. Moving into our volatility index, we can see that the overall volatility index on the 30 day period is still gradually moving toward the downside, actually reaching a volatility rating of 1.3%. Guys, the last time we saw 1.3% was all the way back in, when was this? 2020, July 2020. That was the last time we saw volatility this low. It is absolutely insane stuff. Looking at our liquidations, we can see from 18 million in liquidations, the majority of those came from short positions with a small amount coming from longs. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the DXY. The DXY, again, is closed right now as the weekend price action. The weekend, we do see these markets close. We do expect the DXY to be opening up pretty soon. It's going to be a very important week for the DXY. An incredibly important week for the overall markets as the markets, not only Bitcoin, but the stock markets and even the DXY are all in pretty important positions. It is going to be very decisive um, and it's going to set the tone for the next month of price action. Looking at the DXY from a broader perspective, our key levels are still going to be this dotted downtrending resistance and our lower support range. Above here should be considered bearish, below here should be considered bullish. Looking at the economic calendar, our key economic events are going to be our NFP, so unemployment rate and NFP data over here. This is going to be on the 4th of August. Moving downwards on the 10th, we have our inflation data. Definitely we'll be talking about that as we come closer to the date, but there's something to keep in mind in because it's going to be in the first two weeks of the month. Moving on from there, we can see guys looking at the stock market, we are still sitting above this deviation point over here and the Dow Jones are still sitting at that high time frame resistance level. Again, very critical positions for both these assets to be in. We do want to see how these indices go over the next week, particularly how they open and how they close. So watch those weekly candles. Moving to Bitcoin. 
before we get into the, uh, the depth of our analysis, we do have the monthly candle closing in one day and 21 hours. Something to keep in mind on, something to be watching out for. In tomorrow's video, we're going to be discussing in massive detail the macro charts in regards to this monthly candle. But today, we're going to be talking about the short term. So let's go ahead and jump into Bitcoin. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss my favorite exchange, BitGet. If you're looking for a safe, honest, reliable, and accurate exchange, look no further than BitGet. You can sign up by the link in the description to support the channel and get access to three exclusive perks. That being up to 5,005 US dollars in trading rewards, up to 15% discount on your trading fees, and exclusive access to our Mega World promotion campaigns that we run every few months. Alongside that guys, BitGet is a non-KYC exchange, meaning you do not have to KYC, it is completely optional. BitGet also has a protection fund that secures user assets against external hacks and threats in the space. Alongside that guys, BitGet offers up to 125x leverage on futures with extensive amount of trading pairs and liquidity on the market. I highly recommend signing to BitGet. It is the exchange I've been using for over a year and a half now, including all of our members. If you're interested in signing up, trading there and supporting the channel, you can do so with the link in the description. Thanks for listening. So taking a look at Bitcoin right now on the smaller time frame, we do see our overall rising channel formation. Before we discuss this, we need to discuss our weekly slash daily chart. Right now, Bitcoin is in a overall uptrend. Our uptrend is represented by this uptrending diagonal trend line. Therefore, on a weekly perspective, if we're looking at our trend biases, the trend is technically bullish or what we could call upwards above this trend line and bearish or what we could call downwards below this trend line. Now that doesn't mean we can have weak bullish direction or strong bullish direction. What it represents is it represents the overall trajectory of the trend. It does not represent the strength of the trend above these levels. So it doesn't tell us the strength of the price action above this uptrend, and it definitely wouldn't tell us the strength of the price action below the uptrend. All this is showing us is the overall trajectory of the price action over a specific set period of time, and that, tr uh, that trend trajectory is a very important trigger point for which when the trend will flip from a structural level from up to down. Looking at it from a technical perspective, which we'll be doing today, we can identify the overall strength of the current trend, the key trigger points, and thus the probabilities of the price actually moving downwards or pushing back upwards. And that is going to be the crux of today's video. So let's go ahead and jump in to the small time frame. Right now, the most important level we are looking for for Bitcoin is going to be this higher time frame. So it's around a four hour chart we're looking at over here. We're on an hourly chart over here. We'll jump over to a four hour chart. Is this down trending diagonal resistance? Just as this high time frame, we have an overall uptrend represented by this diagonal. On the hourly chart and the daily chart, we can see a overall downtrend represented by this diagonal trend line. And therefore, the trend is still intact until the trend is lost. And thus, the trend is down until the price is able to break above our downtrend resistance. So right now, the bearish bias is still intact. The price is at risk of continuing downwards whilst we remain underneath our downtrending resistance. If the price is able to break above this downtrending resistance, that is when the trend flips to a bullish bias. So what specifically are we looking out for to indicate that a breakout above that level is plausible and it is likely? First and foremost, we are looking at our momentum indicator. So we have our downtrending resistance on our price action chart we can actually go ahead and insert that similar downtrending line on our momentum chart over here, represented by our RSI. We can see one thing. We can see the RSI has broken out above our downtrending resistance. However, the price has not. So this is an instance where we have one point of confirmation, but not the other. And therefore, this will be considered a false flag for now. What we are looking for for a confirmation of a breakout is two things. We're looking for, from a technical perspective, the momentum to flip bullish and therefore break above our downtrend trend line, which we do technically have. And number two, for the price action to break above that respective downtrending trend line. When we get both of those validation points, the probabilities of a continuation upwards 
increase. From a horizontal perspective, even if we do manage to get both of those levels, we have some very important and very key resistances that actually lay above us that prevent the price from flipping bullish on a higher time frame perspective. The key levels we're looking for is of course going to be this respective local low level of liquidity that we did come up and retest prior at the end of last month. We are looking for, oh sorry, four days ago, what am I talking about? What we are looking for is a break above this point to flip this area as deviation and continue upwards to our POC. If the price is able to get back above this area of liquidity, it is very likely the price will continue to retest that POC point sitting at 30,300. If the price is able to push into that range, we are back within the confines of our prior structure. Meaning if we remember back to a few weeks ago, we had our high time frame horizontal channel, the key horizontal levels within this range are therefore then still applicable. That being 31,000 to 31,200, 300, sorry, being a major, major resistance, and above that being 32,000. So right now, the bulls have a lot to do if they want to regain strength. Every single little hurdle they jump over, they regain a little bit of strength. Hurdle number one to summarize is going to be the downtrending diagonal resistance represented by this trend line. Hurdle number two, which is the most important one right now, is going to be this horizontal liquidity level represented by that 29.6 to 29.7k resistance. Hurdle number three, which is going to be the most important on the higher time frame, is going to be the 30,300 POC. And if we break back above that level, the bulls officially regain the control of this chart. Until then, the price isn't looking very good. So let's discuss the smaller time frame and really talk about, you know, what is going to happen here and what could happen for the next immediate move for Bitcoin. So we'll break it on down. What we have over here is, of course, a potential rising channel formation. If we go ahead and bring up that RSI trend line again, we can draw that respective trend line for support on the downside, drawing across and dragging through these key points of support. Right now, we are in a overall upward trending structure. This is a upward trending structure. The short term structure takes priority on the smaller time frame in comparison to the higher time frame structure. Meaning, just because we break above this small time frame structure doesn't mean we are out of the confines of this rising channel formation. And therefore, just because we break above this downtrending four hourly resistance or this daily resistance, it does not confirm that Bitcoin is going to go through here unless we invalidate this rising channel. So we do need to push above that level to confirm it. And that is why this level here is the most significant level we're watching for, for a bullish reversal. Until then, if we do break upwards, we could expect one more swing high before a potential rejection and back down. That is a real possibility. It's a real scenario we're potentially looking out for. If we want to see the bulls look, take control, that is what we're watching for. If we want to see the bears push the price aggressively down and quickly, we need to see two things. Number one, we need to see the RSI flip negative, meaning the overall RSI over here needs to fall below this uptrending support level on the RSI. This will represent a negative momentum shift. If momentum shifts negative, the price strength decreases, it's more likely to come toward the downside. So if you see the RSI loses trend line, the probabilities that the price will follow through and subsequently also lose that respective uptrending support line significantly increases. Hypothetically, let's say we go ahead and lose that level, the targets of the measured move would suggest a potential breakdown sub 28.8, which is going to be this local low point over here. If we do slightly zoom out to a four hourly chart, we can see that the 29.2K level to 29K level is a current support level represented by the VRPV. We can see a huge chunk of orders have been developing and building in this range over the last couple days. If we move down a little bit, 
we can see in that 28.8k level, we do have a relative amount of support, but below that level, we have almost nothing until we reach that 28.4k, which is a huge, huge area of demand. So on the small time frame, we are watching for those indications of both bullish and bearish continuations. Looking at the higher time frame from a technical perspective, we drag up some other indicators such as the volume, our CVD, such as our open interest, we can see a few things. First and foremost, open interest is very sporadic right over, right over here. It is more or less pushing sideways. This shows a stagnant period of indecision between buyers and sellers, between bulls and bears, the price is waiting for the next move. What it does represent is it represents compression. And where we have compression, we have volatility that soon follows. So expect whatever move to occur, whether it be a move above or below, to be quite a volatile move and likely to catch a lot of people on the flip side or the wrong side of it. It will be a pretty high liquidation move with a lot of liquidations from whatever it does decide to do. If we're looking at the overall momentum, subsequently again, we're looking at the uptrending trend line. If that level is lost, we expect that price to come down. Looking at the CVD, the volume is steadily falling as the price is rising. This is not a very good sign as it does represent overall exhaustion and therefore, again, will more likely result in a break toward the downside, even if the price breaks above that downward trending resistance as we are still again once more in the confines of this rising channel formation. What I think the most likely scenario would be, whilst the momentum remains positive, would be potentially a slow grind upwards and then a further rejection. I think that scenario would be most likely whilst that momentum remains positive. Now, I am not confident enough in this price action to go ahead and even take a trade on it. It's the weekend. I am more than happy allowing the weekend price action to develop, to play out and jump in next week when we have a little bit more clarity on the price action. But looking at it from an observative perspective, looking at it from a perspective of opportunity and a perspective of what you can actually look at for now to prepare and plan, those are the key things I'd be personally watching moving into the next week. Like I said, if we do manage to lose 29k, that will push the price down aggressively to 28.4. If we see that 28.4k level, that is a huge level of support. There's a whole other video about why that will be. If we lose 28.4, the probabilities that we come down and lose this trend line massively, massively increases significantly. Okay, so we're not out of the woods yet. We're not out of the woods yet. The bears do not have total control, but the bulls are slowly and steadily losing control of this trend. And that is what the data is saying. That is what the price action is saying. Watch the charts, watch the data, watch the short-term price action as a short-term price action right now is significantly more important than the high time frame price action as it's going to direct the high time frame price action as we are in a situation right between both bullish and bearish triggers, which will then influence where the price will go over the next week, over the next two weeks, over the next month. And remember guys, if we break above 32K, that is going to be the macro bullish trigger. Price will continue upwards. If we break below this level, that is going to be the weekly bearish trigger. Prices will continue downwards to our weekly support. If we lose our weekly support, that is when we're macro bearish again. So to go ahead and section this off really quickly, just to give you a visual diagram, if we go ahead and delete everything on the chart, okay, we draw back that uptrending support line. We take out some blocks above 32K. This is bullish, okay? We'll go ahead and change this to green. Above 32K, we are bullish, perfect. From 32K, all the way to this uptrending support line. We are what we would call weekly bullish. Okay, so it's a macro bullish. We got weekly bullish. Below 28, uh, sorry, below 29.8, which was that horizontal level, we are short term bearish. That short term bearish strength increases all the way down to that uptrend where we finally lose that weekly strength. Below this trend line, we go into a downtrend on the weekly chart, okay? And below that support level, which was 25.2 to 24.4, we enter a macro bearish trend. So this is going to be daily bearish, okay? This is going to be weekly bearish. This is going to be macro bearish. So to go ahead and reiterate, macro bullish up over here, weekly bullish over here, 
daily bearish under 29.2 weekly bearish underneath the uptrend and monthly bearish underneath that major horizontal support thank you for watching i hope you have a great day enjoy the weekend get some sun and i'll see you guys on the next one tomorrow cheers